Hi, my name is Alana. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Or on this channel, we review books. One thing I'm doing is going back and reviewing books slash, or really dedicating a video to books that I read that I think deserve their own video, but I read and reviewed them prior to the YouTube days. So those reviews are buried on my uh, Instagram feed somewhere. Don't even don't even. Who's going to sit there and scroll through three years of content to find this book that I'm going to review today? Obviously by the title. <laughs> the Sea, the Sea by Iris Murdoch. This is my first Murdoch. And occasionally I've gotten comments on YouTube asking me, oh, I would love to know. Oh, can you read and review The Sea, the Sea? Would love to know your thoughts. I have read it. Uh, it's just not on YouTube. Here you go. You're welcome. I am not going to belabor this. Um, again, uh, I'm just going to dive right in. I will say I read this book in 2021. So actually the summer of 2021. So it's been quite some time since my first read. I have not reread it since. This is my review. This is my review. Um, and so this is what I wrote. A, this is what I picked up uh, back in 2021. I have not revisited this review. So we'll see. We'll see what I was, uh, what was going through my brain. We decide to do A instead of B. And then the two roads diverge utterly and may in the end lead to heaven and to hell. Oh man, Murdoch. I am a fan of Murdoch, by the way. I think she's, I think she's funny in, in a different way. The C, so the C, the C was awarded actually the Man Booker Prize in 1978. And the novel centers around Charles Araby, a recently retired and somewhat well-known theater director slash actor. He leaves London to, for a remote place by the sea. You don't really know where it is. Living in a dilapidated house where he can live in solitude and write his memoir. However, his acquaintances still track him down and he unexpectedly is reunited, reunited with his first love. The sea, the sea is low-key humorous but in a weird way like this book i enjoyed it i did the initial plot of the sea the sea and i find this with all of iris murdoch's novels when you look at the blurb that the publisher may have put up there especially i feel like these vintage classic editions that i have they come across as if they're going to be soap opera ish and i remember staying away from iris murdoch for a long time because i feel like the blurbs didn't do them just i was like the blurbs kind of actually threw me off i was like this sounds like a soap opera like melodrama and yeah it's it's a little melodramatic but really when you look into iris murdoch she is uh, philosophically a genius and so Murdoch expertly weaves in greater themes such as love, guilt, idealized memory, romance, a bit of existentialism, phenomenology into these uh, plots that when you look at the blurbs without really diving into the novels first, seem like they're going to be superficial and they're really not. So Murdoch's witty and sarcastic style was the first thing that caught my attention with this book. And um, even with, uh, what, what was it, The Sandcastle that I read last year in 2023. So even as the narrator, the, sorry, the narrative does get darker at times and even rather absurd, Murdoch still is able to maintain this bit of humor throughout the story, especially with Charles, this main character. He is, he's one of a kind. <laughs> there are these little hint sentences here and there that would make me chuckle throughout the narrative and it keeps the mood um, a little bit lighter, even though she's throwing in some, maybe some more twisted elements. I ate and drank slowly as one, as, as one could cook fast, eat slowly and without distractions, such as thank heaven, conversation or reading. Eating is so pleasant. One should even try to suppress thought. Of course, reading and thinking are important, but my God, food is important too. That is just a taste of what this main character narrating is like. Charles is so funny. Charles would loathe that I do consider reading, uh, sorry, mealtime, one of the prime times for reading, but that's just me. Um, there are so many descriptions in this book of the ridiculous things that Charles eats throughout the novel. One could make, have a, the fun task of 
making a list of just his really twisted meals. Um, it, it's entertaining. He eats some bizarre things. One of the, ma- but moving on, moving on. One of the major themes in the C to C is this concept of life being the grand theater that art imitates. This is why all the world is a stage, why the theater is always popular and indeed why it exists, why it is like life, even though it is also the most vulgar and outrageously fictitious of all the arts. Iris Murdoch. Man, this is making me want to reread the C to C. Charles sees that the theater, again, remember he's an actor, a retired actor, director. So Charles sees the theater of the arts as a way to manipulate the people in his life, which is also a greater theme of like a discussion that you could have about art in general. Is art manipulative? And um, he is constantly maneuvering the people around him for his own purposes and goals. Again, Iris Murdoch is posing a a larger question here. What did the arts really do to us? They can definitely sway us. This actually makes him a rather deplorable person. And Iris Murdoch is good at that. She will take her main characters and make them people that are not necessarily likable. And yet again, there are these greater philosophical questions that arise. Do we all do this to some extent? Are we all playing roles and moving things and people around us to fit into the roles we want them to play in the story of our choosing? And again, like I said more at a macro level, how are the arts manipulating us? How are how do the arts manipulate or do they manipulate society? Or it does it manipulate society? That's an open question. Feel free to comment down below. <laughs> Is one of those who have a strong concept of the life they want to lead and the role they want to play and lead it and play it at the expense of everyone, especially their nearest and dearest. And the off thing is that such people can, in a sense, be wrong, can, as it were, miscast themselves and yet battle on successfully to the end, partly because their victims prefer a definite, simple impression of the planes of critical thought. Also, the C to C hones in on the idealization and memorialization of people, especially people from one's past, how we put these people um, on a pedestal sometimes. They can be kind of tinted with rose colored glasses. Charles, in some cases, not always. Some, uh, so Charles writes a lot about the people in his life and he is definitely an unreliable narrator. <laughs> Charles, Charles, I, I, going back to this review, I forget how ridiculous Charles uh, is as a character. Charles will discuss a person in his life, whether it be a cousin of his, uh, his previous romantic partners, uh, his theater colleagues. And when these characters are introduced in the novel, remember some of these people hunt him down when, when they find out where he's retired to, their behaviors don't line up with Charles' descriptions of them. How can one describe real people? Perhaps that is what this book will turn out to be. Again, his memoir. Simply my life toward in a series of portraits of the people I have known. So however, like an artist painting a portrait of a person, the person is at the mercy of the painter. And this is actually a thing that also showed up in the sandcastle that I discussed. And Charles has made up his mind about how he views the people in his life. The character um, with the biggest discrepancy in Charles's life is his first love, Hartley. And Charles refuses to acknowledge that Hartley is not the young woman from his youth. He does come across this woman later in life in his retirement. He has painted um, her a certain way and cannot separate this or distinguish this from the reality that actually is. This idealization of Hartley Hartley, and the insanity that ensues drives upon the novel as he pursues this woman who is now married, by the way, um, for his own purposes, for his own like trying to um, reconnect with something in the past that no longer is. Um, He has this he's hanging on to this unrealistic and romanticized concept of young love, perhaps even a way that is very theatrical as if one were reading a play. Ask yourself what really happened between whom all those years ago. You've made it into a story and the stories are false. So as I said earlier, uh, Charles is not necessarily the most likable character. However, he is quite self-aware. He knows he's just icky in a lot of ways. Um, 
And he does actually have a bit of a character arc. So there is that. And I can always appreciate that. I like that Iris Murdoch did that. He does he does acknowledge some things by the end of the book. And Charles is not supposed to be likable though. And Murdoch is known for having these main male characters that are the worst. I find it interesting that most of Murdoch's writing, like uh, her novels, she writes f men. Like they're the main character. She may write it in their voice, whether it's the first person or third person. Uh, she's writing from the perspective of men. And as I continue to read more of her work, I'm going to uh, explore that concept. Why? Um, I'm sure there are scholars who've written on this, but I want to kind of figure that out by myself. Also, I, I love Iris Murdoch's writing. The dialogue is quick and snappy. There's, there are also these gorgeous descriptions in this book in particular about the sea and the landscape. If you are a fan of novels that take place by the sea, novels novels that describe uh, sea life, that oceanic coast uh, living, coast living, what it's like to live on a coast and how the sea just has such an impact on uh, what it, uh, those who live there, what it's like to live on a coastline. That was a lot of word salad. This is a this is a book for you. Uh, the descriptions of the sea, and there are also references to the Odyssey that I would like to dive deeper. I don't know what's with me, and my hand gestures. I'd like to dive deeper into when I do choose to reread this book. There's so many images of eels and sea monsters and references to seals. All of these mean something. You could have a field day diving deeper into these. Again, and I think that this book is worth rereading alone. This is a reminder to myself, just for the scenic descriptions, right? So I found The Sea the Sea to be an enjoyable and dramatic novel. Murdoch's Rydock, like I said, is so descriptive. It's relatable. It's evocative. It's just, and even though it's a chunkier book, it's not, and there are a lot of rich themes to discover, it's not heavy or dense. And she, and this is what I like about Iris Murdoch, and I realized this when I read her, uh, this the Sandcastle. She is able to weave in philosophical concepts. She was a philosopher, and she does it in a way that is easy to process. It's not super dense. She could have made this dense. If you've ever listened to Iris Murdoch talk in an interview about what she believes philosophically. It can be a lot. It can be confusing at times, I think. But when you read her novels, it's simplified. And I think that's great. Um, there were times when I did feel like the plot was a bit repetitive, but it didn't really ruin the book for me. And again, I continued, to, I, I do look forward to reading more of her novels. Again, I've read two, The Sea, the Sea, and the Sandcastle. Maybe this year I can get to another one. I already pulled one for myself. Uh, Under the Net, which is over there. But... I just, I really enjoy the sea, the sea. And um, yeah, one day I'm going to reread it just for the sea imagery alone. So I want it. So yay. I've crossed that off my list, getting around to doing a video review of the sea, the sea. Have you read the sea, the sea? What were your thoughts on it? Did you like it? Have you read Iris Murdoch? What's your, if you have, what's your favorite Murdoch novel? Uh, those of you who haven't read Murdoch, but you're curious to, Give her a try. Give her a try. She might be up your she she might be up your alley if you like um, existential or phenomenal not phenomenological themes in your novels. If you like quirky characters, um, snappy snappy dialogue, dark humor, a little melodrama. Iris Murdoch may be your gal. All right. So with that, I'm closing my laptop lid. <laughs> I'm going to sign off. Please feel free to like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. Also, if you would like, feel free to follow me on the Instagram where I get up to more book shenanigans. All of my book reviews go up there first. I am reading at a slower pace this year and I'm really, really enjoying it actually. So I'm not posting as much on Instagram and it has taken me longer to get to reviews because I'm just taking my time. This is a hobby, right? It should feel fun. It should never feel like work. So, um... But my stuff, my, my book content will go live there first. I also like to post goofy things in the Instagram stories because I think the internet should really be uh, for goofy memes and good, funny uh, dog 
in animal videos. Okay, so there's that. And with that, I'm going to sign off.